lost to a techies. <laughs> Why is this hero in Dota? Uh huh. And then I see him outside the after they played the group stage matches. I think it was against C deck and they won it Prepare twice. And I was like, what was with that? And he's like, XD memes. <laughs> and so they immediately <laughs> pick it. I mean, this is the deciding game for them, and they decide to grab it. And if you notice in this mid lane, he's already placing mines and. I have a theory, Blitz. I have a theory. Oh, no, this is... You know what that's... Fear's trying to distract them. Like, I'm not even kidding. This is what you do to bother them so they don't pay attention to AUI doing this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So I have a theory about the AUI. He sets up this petition, right? He sets up the petition. Valve, remove techies, at least from matchmaking, at the very least, right? And that's not successful. Valve, leave it in there. And so now, AUI, on the biggest matches, on the biggest world stage, he's trying to draw some attention. But e -Hump found him. They know what's what. AUI has been spotted out. It doesn't look like the mind setup is going to work out for him. Evil geniuses are backing him pretty heavily here. They move forward, put down the Catawarn, and those double mines will be taken away. And this is fairly significant because you actually do need to kill, or uh, you actually do need to keep this alive, but the problem right there is that even dewarding that pretty much tips off Ehome that there are mines up there, and as long as CTY remembers and doesn't accidentally walk up there, he should be fine in. Right. It's a razor against an Ember Spirit. That's an incredibly the bad lane for begins. the Ember to be able to one on one in. And I mean, Sumail's the type of player that does rely on having a matchup which is favorable for him. And this is definitely not one of those. And he doesn't really have a good support to help him out in lane if it becomes too much now that the mine has been spotted out. Uh, I'm not sure if PPD is really going to be able to spend too much time going on that mid especially pre-level 2, and then you've got Lanham on top of everything else that Samael's going to be facing up against. He has to go against a Razor. He's not going to get much help from his supports. He also has to deal with Lanham, who's going to be trying to counter his Courier immediately. And the thing is, 20 damage at a later phase of the game isn't too much, but in the early part of the game, it's a quarter of your damage. So it's going to be incredibly hard for the Ember, who already struggles in the laning phase, to be able to do anything. Like, the problem with Ember Spirit is that your first two levels of both your abilities aren't very good. You don't want to use the Side of Fist because of the cooldown. The Flame Guard blocks almost nothing. And Searing Change just doesn't do damage at an early level, so... Right. It's really hard for Sunil to get aggressive here, but... CTY is just going to take full advantage of this, and... It... Something even more curious is this Universe offlane Lina against this ROTK offlane Dark... or this safe lane Darks here. This might be one of the few situations where an offlane Lina actually wins a lane. Yeah, very curious. Why exactly are we seeing this e running a, a sort of aggro dual lane here between YJ's Phantom Lancer and DDC's Witch Doctor? They just feel like pressuring the Bloodseeker in the beginning of the game is that important? I think so, but I think it more just speaks to the fact that they think that it's going to be a really hard lane for ROTK, and I think this is still a decently favorable matchup. As long as you don't run into the Techies' minds, which... Denied. I mean, that you could say that about Techies at any phase of the game. You should be okay in this off lane. Bonham still waiting Oh, he's sending in... He's trying to send illusions. Do you see that? Yeah. So he can spot the mines. Yeah, this is going to be one of the harder things to deal with. Phantom Lancer always has those kind of disposable units to throw out and try and catch out the mines. AUI actually grabbed an Invis rune now. This obviously could set up a lot as he's got that Suicide Squad ready to go. CTY may be the target here, but he does have 720 HP. They're going to need a little bit more, and that's why it's important that Samael joins in on this attempted gank. Spots out the Courier, but of course AUI can't really kill that with his damage. Start pinging him out. Catamor being laid down. He spots out AUI. They start going for it. Body blocking close enough. Smith's going to be able to get the change. Do they have the damage already? It looks first like it's CTY. We'll be taken out. First blood goes to Samael. Great stuff. I think he's getting help. He's getting a first Uh oh. Fear bottom lane. He needs some help. YJ's got another lance coming in here. Adds an extra movement speed, but he clears through the trees with a doppelganger. They just need the vision for the lance. YJ gets it. And Fear will go down. The counter kill is there. One to two now. The advantage of EO. And the thing is, Spear's pretty much solo down here. It's a Spirit Breaker support who's not really going to offer you any sort of potential to kill. It's a Witch Doctor, which is one of the best heroes at offlaning, just because the cask is so efficient. And it's a Phantom Lancer who can just doppelganger away if you decide to go on him, so... And it's also a Techies that's a support player for you. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much a Bloodseeker against two heroes, and this is an efficient matchup, and that's why AUI says, okay, there's nothing I can really do up bottom, but... He picks up that Invis rune, decides to go for that mid gank, and I mean, it was perfect. That body block was just really well done. 
Can we please talk about Lonham's bounty hunter, though? He's been spending, he has not a single point of experience. He's been spending all of his time looking for that courier, e.g., kept it inside of the base until the three minute marker where they were able to upgrade it and with bounty hunter especially not having that and not being able to there's no way he could actually pick it off anymore so he actually hasn't really done anything for his team especially since Samael was still able to win his lane thanks to that gank from AUI and now has his bottle in hand what does Lotum do now I mean there's no point in trying to debate what a, how many times have we talked about like, the early game impact of a bounty hunter completely failing mm -hmm. and how often does it not matter like, the point of the hero is just to create as much of a disruption as you can, but if you can, at the end of the day, all you really are relying for is a track. Oh, Lana. He may be caught out here. Oh, Universe. He has the counter ward there, but unfortunately, he just expended one of his spells. If he maybe had the combination, he could have gone on Lana, but didn't see him in time. CTY still aggressively pushing up against a male. Samael sitting at 11-3 CS despite the first blood. Obviously not a great matchup for him. He's going to do a bit of bottle crowing. He needs that extra help. Yeah, he homer got to feel pretty confident right now because Fear's not really getting too much out of this bottom lane. He's doing okay in CS, but the Phantom Monster's right behind him. The Dark Seer actually tops the net worth chart right now when it comes to last hits. And DTY still doing a good job in this mid lane. Samael only has 11 CS, but it doesn't really get better from here. And he's actually getting pretty aggressive right now yes, in this mid lane. Samael pushing in. He's going to pop the ultimate Dying despite having no damage. The magic damage is enough for Samael to pick up the kill. CTY once again trying to challenge the young evil genius's player, but ends up losing the matchup. Two kills going into Samael. And he's going to start this snowball rolling, but we saw that in game number one. It didn't make much of a difference there. I mean, Sumail to me is just so impressive this entire tournament. I think that's the fifth game I've casted where he gets a solo kill against the enemy mid laner. Granted, uh, CTY was ganked Radiant's before that, but even in that previous game, attack. CTY, a player known for his lane dominance, is just constantly getting gone on. And again, AUI comes Dyer's from behind. Yeah, they're going to be able to blow him up. The suicide goes off. Easy Radiant's kill on the Razor. They even had PPD attack. charging in just to make sure that they assure that kill. Lonim actually going for the sneaky ward now, getting more vision on this middle lane. They've got double counter laid in place they still see the mines and are just trying to keep vision but it doesn't seem to matter once again Samael still picks up the kill thanks to the help of AUI and the support techies is working out quite well for evil geniuses we talk, like the, the support techies in, com in combination with the spirit breaker seems like a very large amount of you know inoffensive action against Ehome, except for when you're able to pick up that end of his room and start the snowball run. But the blood right, almost catching up. Doppelganger still gets away. TDC gets bashed up, but PPD is forced back. Samael's gonna join him though. He's got also grab then ready to go. Pops the chains, but doesn't get to YJ. And Fear still trying to run him down. YJ doesn't have that doppelganger ready to go. They're just running him down. Fear ready to go with the rise. Last click. Samael is actually the one who gets it for the killing spree. And Samael's just been the dominant force in this game already with three kills. All of his rotations have paid off. I mean, I really thought CTY was just gonna take over in this Radiant's lane. Look at that. Is under attack. This mind spanning. Is this just in case he like happens to run right next to the trees and it explodes? Yeah, I think that's what he's actually shooting for because CTY keeps dipping in and out. And this is just Techies is such a frustrating hero to play against because you can't really get sentries everywhere. You're pretty right. much just playing a guessing game and hoping that he's not where you want him to be. And, you know, I've seen this before with remote mines, but. With early on landmines being placed like this. Oh, YJ. CTY is getting dangerously well. close to that area. And, and this is such a weird place for AUI because they can't really see him and he doesn't have the suicide, so if they spot him, he's pretty much instantly dead, but mm -hmm. it's kind of working out for him. I think I said this in like group phase. If you die against the techies, you pretty much just have to be like, Dota. well, that's Dota. <laughs> <laughs> You just gotta pretend like the game broke and your hero just disappeared. Like it was a game breaking bug. You reported on Reddit or something and complained. You just can't get tilted off of it. Oh, it's four to three right now. Eight minutes in. Evil geniuses, they seem to be looking okay. Right now, net worth, they're slightly ahead. Samael's gonna go on CTY here in the middle lane. TDC has the backup though, ready to go with the cask. 
Universe has actually come over, and he's still got his Laguna Blade ready to go. ROTK is down here with the Invis Rune. Looks like they're going to try and really put some pressure on some mail. But do they actually have the chain stuns to do so? Lonam actually runs into a mine there, and some mail may have just gotten enough of heads up. There, there goes the mines. ROTK runs right into that one. And now turn around. Oh, this. oh my goodness, he actually catches the RTK. Gets the kill. The Voodoo Restoration was not enough, and some mail. Unbelievable. Three Dying heroes there just decides to go for attack. it, doesn't even care, realizes what's up and not. And I mean, he's just playing so dominantly this game. He has four out of the five kills on EG so far. And the thing is, what makes this so important is that even though he did this last game, it was against a Storm Spirit. Storm Spirit can go to the jungle and decide to dominate elsewhere, but Razor's a hero that's charging static. from behind. CTY, he's gonna be triple ganked. He doesn't stand a chance against all of this. Fear moves out of his lane to go for the gang successfully, might I add. And evil geniuses seem to be looking unstoppable, winning every single one of their lanes now. YJ has to dodge the light strike array there with the doppelganger. If he gets hit by that one, the combination of nukes, Universe will kill him. That's a 47 CS off laning Lena, who's actually got the most CS on her team. Just four behind that Darkseer. This is the type of Universe play that we're looking forward to, where he's given a one-on-one -on -one matchup and Absolutely takes advantage DDC. of it. DDC. Why he can't do much? Ooh, he came over at the same time. Bounty Hunter goes down at the bottom lane. DDC will spot out the mines being placed by AUI in the top lane. This Bounty Hunter is not going to be picking up his level 6 anytime soon at this rate. It's okay though. The real mine trap is a little bit further down. Is I mean, AUI is just going to be laughing to himself in the booth Dyer's as he waits for this to happen. I'm uh, just waiting for it, DDC. No, there's no way that DDC down. walks out there. This guy's a TI player. He's just going to casually... Because the thing is, you can't expect it. It's right. such a ridiculous place to put mines. <laughs> you know what I'm also waiting for is YJ to doppelganger downwards at some point in time into that tree and blow up those mines as well. They're looking so hard for the mines because they know that there are some up here, but... Yep. I mean... That's what Techies does to you. He just changes the way that you play the game. It's no longer Dota 2, it's Minesweeper, boys and girls. E-Home are searching for those openings. Looks like both teams gonna sit back and farm a little bit. ZTY actually utilizing his ultimate right now to do the jungle. Very rare that we see Razor uh, commit to the jungle, especially so early on, but he kind of has to with the constant ganks that are coming in the middle lane. This is the weakness of heroes like Razor and Viper, mm -hmm. and why we see them so often in the short lane, because if they get dominated in the mid lane, this is so. This is such inefficient jungling. Like he's not actually getting that much bomb out of this, but the issue is that CTY has nowhere else to go. That's why it matters so much more that Sumail did such a good job in this game versus the last one. Because Storm, if he dies once, it doesn't really Dyer's matter. He'll just go to the jungle. He doesn't fortified. care about it. When you're a Razor, you have to just static stay in your lane. But if you keep showing yourself, EG will take advantage of that and dive you every time. Look for PPD. He actually managed to pick up his level 6 fairly early on here. He's going to be using it to try and gank up YJ. The charge is going to be coming through. He's got the doppelganger ready to go. Or no, he doesn't actually. It's down for 14 seconds, but EG are not going to be able to dive the tower. Yeah, they just wanted... Maybe they just wanted to force him into the mines. I don't know. But this tower push is going to be incredibly hard, but... They rotated a lot of heroes here. Tower pushing is not CD's forte right now. They've got Alina, who's going for a Yule Scepter, doesn't have a lot of physical damage. Your techies is really good, but you don't want to send your Bloodseeker or your Ember Spirit into the front lines. I think if you're EG, the game plan is just create as much map presence as possible. Just kill as many heroes as you can by repeatedly running at them nonstop and hope that the threat of the mines is enough to keep E-Home at bay, or eventually they just get pushed back. But E-Home, they need to create more space for YJ. He just needs a lot more farm than this at this point. Well, now, what about the Razor? We've actually seen Razor a number of times from Eho at the group stage. Uh, they kind of went for the same build every single time. Picking up the early mech, they eventually go for the Shivas. Do you think that changes anywhere in this game, especially due to CTY's slower start than normal? I mean, there's no way that you rely on CTY getting a mech anymore. He probably just goes for straight BKB. Oh, or... I'm sorry. We already have the mech on ROTK, yeah, yeah. so of course he's not going to be good for it. He goes for the drums, or even just a straight BKB. Right. But like, getting the drums is probably better because if you go for a BKB, you're pretty much all in committed at that point. Dyer's middle tower. It doesn't help you farm. Attack. It doesn't give you mana regen or anything like that. It's just a straight fighting item. Evil geniuses 
You said it before in game number one. This is what they tend to do. They grab some sort of safe laner that's able to utilize the jungle to free up the bottom lane for AUI to farm it up. That's what he's doing on his techies. He's just now getting his level six. So now Ehome have to worry about remote mines as well. I mean, this is the perfect AUI hero because they're not going to gank him. PBD. He's in here. Team all by himself. He actually pops the ultimate. Gets that 17%. Watch it. It's a trouble there. Luger. Luger blade goes out. He does have the damage. Now he needs to lose his own ultimate. He managed to pick up the kill still. Double kill for both of them. Fear. He's going to try and run down TTY. Samail stop that TP. But the rest of the team is coming in. The mech is out. There goes the wall as well. Samail still fighting away with that flame guard. He's actually doing so much damage up against ROTK. And Fear has that extra movement speed. Track me damn. Fear's going to go for it. Trying to run down ROTK. He skips that surge though and back to the tier 2 tower. Fear will back up and heal himself off the creeps. Top tower yeah, and e -home, they just have to be prepared for that counter initiation game from EG. PPD just recklessly throwing himself into pretty much everybody from Ehome doesn't even care because he realizes they just can't fight us right now. Nobody from Ehome has any farm. Phantom Lancer isn't the type of hero that you want to be getting into early game engagements with. And that Witch Doctor even has such a great time, but unable to do anything anymore. Man, AUI, the problem is they, he doesn't have any mines down there, but there's no way for Ehome to know that. Right. So they don't want to gank him, but at the same time, you're giving up a tier one talent for him. Now, what do you think about his item build? Because before, again, we saw this in the group stage, uh, he actually tries to go for the early Aghanim sometimes, which allows him with level two remote mines to instantly clear through creep waves, oh, which is a huge right advantage. Now. For yeah, sure. They're gonna jump in, trying to grab DDC. There is no TPs whatsoever from Ehome. Samael easily picking up the kill. And the reason why they send that Witch Doctor down there is because nobody else wants to go down there. They just drew sticks and said, all right, you lost. Go find out what happens. Report back to us if you die, whatever. We're not even mad about it. <laughs> EG. Keep on putting the pressure on YJ as well. Even if they get that pick off in the bottom lane, there's still the very big threat a PPD with the charge and ultimate ready to go, as well as the Bloodseeker rupture. The combination of the two is so much single target damage. Bloodseeker actually going for an early Sanj here. There goes the first Yule Scepter universe. They're going to blow up RTK, and the TPs are just not going to be in time. Ehome. Very ineffective rotations. Unable to stop anything, unable to get a counter kill. And even then, look at YJ. He's gonna have to play so careful up here in this top lane. Honestly, this isn't even Ehome playing badly at this point. It's just their limitations of their draft. They TP in. What stops EG from just getting out? Dyer's like, there's one disable on their team. It's the cast. That's about it for them. You've got the vacuum, and that kind of counts, but it doesn't really matter. Oh. No, there's no way. YJ. He's so close to it, but... And just yet, the rupture laid out. YJ is not actually going to pop the doppelganger in time, and now he's going to be chased on down. He falls, and Evil Genius is now on the way out. There goes that cast, though. They managed to get him out. Dicked on the fear. He's running his way downwards. ROTK going out. It looks like he's just going to take out the Maledict. Fear will end up going down. A one for one trade off. Samael. Maybe they make the jump here. Yule Scepter by Troy Gray. They have a little blade up in five seconds. It's a mail though, it's gotta get out of here. The charge is coming in. PPD cancels it. Dyer's bottom Still though, they're leaving AUI alone in this bottom lane, and that's always dangerous as this tier two tower is gonna fall quickly at this rate. I mean, I was just kidding before, but it's actually happening. Like they don't want to send core heroes down there because the core hero is not gonna have sentries on them. So they're too afraid that they're just gonna waste their time and their net worth going down there and instantly blowing up. Like, look what YJ is doing right now. He's sending illusions down and just hoping that he doesn't run into mines. But he's so afraid of farming right now that he's just sending in illusions. He's got double remote mines right now placed in that bottom lane. It's not gonna be enough by itself. In the meantime, Samael is gonna clear through this creep wave real quickly and open up that tier one tower. Dyer's middle In fact, he doesn't even need the bounty for it. He's already got structures are fortified. that uh, Blade Fury coming in. Sumail, Dyer's got so much farm right now. Attack. That Battle Fury, like you said, at the top. He's going to get the last hit on the tower. tower EG's lineup, they just continue to run at them. Like, I... What are Ehome supposed to do? The only way they're getting kills right now is if EG overextends like crazy.
because they just don't have the disables to go on them. They probably need a bare minimum of a Blink Dagger on ROTK to even get aggressive at this point, and that's probably what they're waiting for, some way to initiate, and just hope at that point your Phantom Lancer has enough farm where he can be self-reliant. I mean, add on top of that, uh, this is thinking way, way deep in the game. Hold up here. Charge is coming out on YJ. Samail is going to make his friend then jump. Forces out the Doppelganger, and Samail actually just keeps on going. Both TDC backs his way up, though. But going back to it, a late game, how did Ehol push into this? You've got Blood Rage, Ember Spirit, who's already picked up his battle through very early on to the game, and a Techies, who is going to be incredibly farmed as well. This is a nightmare scenario for trying to end the game. The situation for Ehol right now is, if we kind of against our game plan, is just to get this Phantom Monster as farmed as possible and Dyer's ignore the heroes from EG. Yeah, you don't really care about their net worth. All that matters is that you know that YJ, if this goes to 70 minutes and the game isn't over yet, will have six slotted items and can send illusions uphill to just get the tower down for you. Uh, but the problem with that game plan is getting to that point because EG just continue to apply pressure. They're even going to go for the smoke gank here. And AUI just continues to send mines at this bottom lane and it's hard for them to continue to lay aggression anywhere else. Like e Homer are stuck on one side of the map right now. Rotator round, Solana barely TP's out ahead of Universe. In the meantime, we do have to keep our eye on CTY at this bottom lane. Radiant's AUI middle tower just throwing attack. out the farming remote mines, pushing the wave into that tier two. He gets one more mine there, the tier two will fall. He's sending the chicken to the shop. I'd imagine that's gonna be a point booster. I'd hope that's a point booster anyways. I don't know what else he can go for in the secret shop at this point, but... Uh, Yep, there it is. So the early Aghanim Scepter. Yeah, and I know so much of our attention in this cast is focused towards techies, but mm -hmm. that's just what happens Daya's when the heroes in the game. Like, so attack. much of everybody's attention is focused in on him that it changes the way that you play completely. Like, you worry about him, you're worried about the mines, and uh, I guess the good news for Eom is now that they have these sentries and they know that AUI is standing at this bottom lane, they don't really have to worry too much about where uh, he's planting mines. Like, they know that it's got to be on one side of the map. So this opens up an opportunity for Eom. Like, they can finally start to take a little bit more control back. Samael is on the hunt right now with that invis rune. The counter work was just laid out by Lonim, though. Sees the ward. Already the charge laying out. They're going to go for Lonim now. Samael pops his flame guard and just runs down Lonim as best he can. But they don't have enough damage. They still manage to get that tier 1 tower. YJ unable to get the deny because of Yule's such a usage on the universe. Now the rupture going to be placed on YJ. Doppelganger to the side. Still going to be hit by the silence. But the evil geniuses are not ready to go that deep. I mean, ultimately, they're just buying more space for AUI. Yeah, they don't really need to continue to die for that because their heroes are just out farming everybody on E-Home anyways. And right. they know they can rely on the fact that CTY still can't really do anything but continue to right-click away. And yeah, there's that. Some <laughs> applause from the crowd as they see that net worth growing for evil geniuses. The fear, he's got the SNY, his next item is BKB really a necessity? It doesn't feel like there's too many disables or magic damage that he dodges. Can he go a more stat-focused build? Yeah, going for the SNY here is perfectly fine. You just want to be able to out-kite the Phantom Lancer Dyer's and the Razor statically. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's not much else required right now because, again, there's only one disable on the side of Ehom. A lot of their damage is just based on physical damage and their team fight from the Vacuum Death Ward. Mm -hmm. So as long as they can avoid the F by going inside and out, it should be perfectly fine, but... Uh, so because of that, the uh, lack of disabled, perhaps, does he go BKB next, or is there something else? No, I think you can just continue to be a little bit more greedy. Okay. Actually, you probably get a BKB just for the Witch Doctor cast when you run in with Sumail. It'll probably help a lot. Even though it's one disabled, Daya's it's still not enough. Yeah, it's probably right. still annoying enough that you Why just don't Jay? want to... Oh my goodness, Sumail challenges him, and he can play this aggressively because Ehom just don't have any way to punish him for being so far forward again because the cast is really the only disabled. Daya's Finally, AUI gets the opportunity to lay down that landmine and claims the tier two at the bottom lane. I mean, he's just, I, I forget, I think he's just forgotten that he's playing in a TI. He's just casually been planting mines nonstop. He doesn't really care about what's going on in the rest of the game. Just happily chipping away at that tower. He's got an Aghanim Scepter at 22 minutes. I know he's having the time of his la life. Like, if he's in the booth right now, he's just laughing so hard because nobody's touching him. <laughs> so he's now got that 600 damage nuke thanks to the Aghanim Scepter and level 2 remote lines. This instantly will clear through a creep wave, which makes it impossible. It's just going to be a 
constant split push out from AEY. As you can see, boom, there goes the whole entire wave. YJ's forced back from one mine. The charge is coming in, but I'm sure YJ's going to be heading back to base. This is how far we've fallen, that a crowd is cheering for our techies to win because they're the only <laughs> North American team left. Dota's over. You take what you can get at this point, guys. <laughs> PPD will cancel his charge, but still is in a great position to be able to get a charge maybe on that middle lane if somebody shows up. Of course, with the Universe having that Aghanim Scepter, he's got 675 pure damage just from his ultimate. They could quickly burst down any hero that shows up, and uh, looks like, yeah, he's going to ignore the BKB on Bloodseeker. He goes for a, a more farming item, more damage, Maelstrom. I wasn't really expecting that item out of everything else. I think it's less because of it's a farming item, but more so you can counter the Phantom Lancer. You okay. just want as much clear as you can to that cut through sense. the illusions as fast as you possibly can. Because mm -hmm. EG recognized the same thing uh, that pretty much everyone here should at this point. It's yeah. that TTY has almost nothing, and he's not going to get items. Like, that's the nature of the hero uh, when you decide to play Razor, but you're going to put a lot of your hopes on this Phantom Lancer at this point. And so EG right now, everything that they're building towards is to counter that Phantom Lancer. You get a lot of different items on your mail. Fear is going to go for that S and Y into Mjolnir. Universe is going to do the same thing. I, we forgot to just mention that Universe has a whole Aghanim Scepter and a Plate Mail. Like, everybody from EG right now is built to deal with that kind of monster. Can you go for the Shivas on Lina at this point and leave the AC up to Fear? Uh, I think so. Going for the Shivas just gives you additional clear. Like, right. All you have to do is kill uh, YJ playing the Phantom Monster right now. You don't have to have any other game plan. Nobody else on e is like I said, they're waiting for the Blink Dagger on ROTK. He's about to pick it up. This is not the E-Home that we've previously seen where they smoke gank, go for towers, because they just don't have the initiation to go along with it. ROTK, he 50 gold away from the Blink Dagger, which is pretty normal for Darkseers after the mech. Is this initiation enough for E-Home to try and force a fight somewhere? I think so. I think you finally go for your first play of the game. Just don't let it be the bottom lane because you don't know right. what lies there. Certainly not the Roshan pit, that's for sure. Yeah. There's just no way for Ehom to know right now. Like they've got one ward up, but probably not enough to give them information. And they've got a 10 second BKB on CTY, they've got a blink dagger I think, on their Darks here. You're not gonna get much more farm than this if you want to take a fight. Otherwise, the game plan is just continue to sit behind the Phantom Lancer and hope that you can hold fights. Is under attack. I think that's one of two game plans that Ehome go for at this point. Oh, nice counter ward. It's gonna spot out, obviously, potential Romo mines up that staircase, but also the Observer Ward that was placed by EG not so long ago. Notice uh, across the board the very aggressive vision from EG. Not only was that bottom ward there, but also middle lane. They've got uh, enough vision to be able to see into that tier 2 area. This opens all, up a lot of room for AUI to place very aggressive remote mines across the board. Yeah, they're still never going to contest it. There's no reason for Ehome to really challenge the dominant of the map control, because it's just going to cost the support too much. Like, at some point, DDT needs to grab some items. Same with the Bounty Hunter. You can't just mindlessly buy sentries and hope that you're going to run into one. Right. And that's the problem right now, and Ehome actually know the two mills here, and this might be an opportunity for a trap, but I think they still doubt their ability to kill him just because the lack of lockdown for them. Yeah. It would be some other unit for them to be able to get that of the cast. There goes a rupture, and with some mail in position, he's actually going to go on to CTY here. Has a Revit, ready to retreat just in case. Will bounce himself back. PPD. Most back. YJ. Nice. Three man back. He the cast over the top. Fear's already gone, and so too does PPD fall. Now a second line comes out for Fear. Samel's gonna try and run interception here. Fear is actually so fast because of the, all the low HP heroes. A remote mines goes off, bringing CTY low. And Fear, he wants to have a hit here. He's gonna go for CTY. Nope. A little bit too deep there, controlling that one. Samel's still trying to go for him. Left down to 100 HP, but CTY does survive. So finally, he goes. It was close, but they do win the smallest of fights, claiming both the Aegis as well as PPD. Oh, that's great. It just shows them that they can still win this game if PG decide to overextend and. The power of that Darkseer, that's the first time they've actually been able to get a really good initiation off. And it's because e EG didn't really have the best vision, and the Darkseer runs in, finally able to get the combo off, and they needed the Blink Dagger from them to be able to do that, but uh, still a lot of match control for EG, and all that EG really have to do is continue to hold, get some items off. Fear's about to get that Milner like we talked about. 
After that, you probably get a BKB, because it, as it just demonstrated, when the Spirit Breaker runs in with you, one of you has to have a BKB. Otherwise, you're just going to get stood up in front of a Witch Doctor who's going to immediately lay down that death board. Right. Because this is such a farming game, in order to get the full force of the net worth advantage for Evil Geniuses, let's take a look at that graph where we see a 15,000 net worth lead by EG, 14k experience. This is all because they're farming more efficiently than Ehome. Ehome are constantly forced to group up, usually go down to that bottom lane because the techies are, are constantly having to stay safe in groups against Samael, who's playing very aggressively trying to threaten these heroes. In fact, he goes for a Scotty next. Very stat-focused item rather than the pure damage focus of, say, a Battle Fury Daedalus build. But why do you think that is? I think he just wants to be able to slow them up more than anything. Because mm -hmm. EG also kind of have a lack of disable. And you just want... When you play a Dyer's really mobile hero like this, under you just want enough HP to guarantee that you don't have to go for a defensive item to be able to survive. Right. Like, he doesn't want to get something like a Lincoln's or a BKB himself, because there's not enough on Ehome to warrant it. But at the same time, just standing around with 1200 HP is probably going to get you killed. Like, you just want enough HP to be able to survive. Not to fix the bill on all fronts. Bottom. He seems to be going for a Dagon build over anything else. I mean, you already have the mech on ROTK. Sometimes you see the four position bounty hunter when he does well. Go for the mech Guardian Greaves. Obviously, that's not an option for him this game. So Dagon, I guess, is his just best item he can go for at this point. Dyer's top I don't know if tower it's is under the attack. best item, but getting Guardian Greaves against EG's lineup it's probably way too late at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, the burst damage helps though. You can instantly get rid of the burst on this from Sumail, and right. that would be pretty significant. Uh, they don't actually burst down a hero like Techies before he gets off that suicide. Yeah, and I guess the Lina, she's got armor. She's gonna go for the Shiva's top tower like we gearcrafted, but it's unlikely that she has enough HP to survive two burst hits. But again, I mean, the main strategy Dyer's for Ehome is still get this Phantom Lancer as farmed as we can and hope that the track advantage is enough. Unfortunately, he's still sitting behind. In fact, it's a pretty drastic difference behind the Techies. Sitting at 8,400 on the Phantom Lancer, Techies at over 10k right now. 15k is fear, top of the net worth on that Bloodseeker, farming away through the enemy jungle constantly. There's just not many places for Ehome to go at this point. Yeah, they don't want to go to... I don't even think they've touched this side of the map, the bottom side of the map and on. They're just so afraid of somebody being blown up by mines, and uh, they're not really willing to push down the mid lane either, and so Ehome are just waiting it out. And The thing is, EG is quite afraid of that trap plus an animal after combination too, yep. which is why they don't just go for the all-in push. If you decide to suicide push in and the Phantom Lancer lives and he gets a kill or two and you suddenly have three or four track kills, the game becomes really weird for EG. Like, they have to wait out the next two road runs just to make it okay again. So it's better for them just continue to farm. We're far they're farming everywhere on the map right now. Make yeah. no mistake about it. Air jungle, top lane, bottom lane, enemy jungle, EG are covering it all. And EG are pretty attack. much left with picking up the scraps. Yeah. I mean, if you're them, you probably just wait for the next rush, right? Yep. There's no reason to overextend for this. Yeah, absolutely. But e home or manning behind their Phantom Lancer, because the lanes aren't pushed in yet. It seems like they, they, they need to five man and push out with the gem that they have. That they just are scared of the uh, the AUI techies. There's two options right now. Uh, if we just pose a question, it's either A, e home just decide to smoke up and go for it and potentially risk losing the game, right. or B, do they just wait for the defense tower of track plus your Phantom Lancer and hope that you can overextend like crazy. Because we have seen a lot of those comeback wins with Bounty Hunter in situations like this. I don't know which one is better here. But it might change. Actually goes for, it's just a value mid booster at this point. Like he's not gonna go heart second item, right? After the defusal blade, it's just a little bit of value in this mid booster for now. He eventually goes hard, but not yet, right? I think it's okay for him yeah. to grab the heart in a game like this. You just need your illusions to be especially when you're against your clear your illusions so quickly. Okay. Like it should be your only goal. Getting a Manta style here probably doesn't help out at all. Fair enough. Roshan is coming up. 
right now. So Evil Geniuses will immediately see that one thanks to the remote mines and will attempt to clear it. Ehome, do they contest it all for a Roshan fight knowing that there's probably a lot of remote mines in that area? No way. <laughs> Just give it up. Stick to the game plan, guys. They've been doing it for Dyer's the last 20 minutes. There's no attack. reason to deviate at this point for such a risky goal. Bouncing around, crowd getting a good share of that one. And what we notice also, AUI, he's doing something. This is what I was talking about earlier, the robot mod. Very common tactic nowadays. For techies, because the enemy's going to be the gem, you actually place remote mines inside of the trees, so even if they do have the gem, they can still stumble into those remote mines because the enemy is large enough to catch up. EG, of course, getting to claim that Aegis. Nice and quick with the BKB and Aegis. It seems like they almost have all their items ready to go for a push uphill. Yeah, Fear's just going to farm a little bit more. They've got... I mean, the easiest way to tell if they're going to go for push or not is, are they waiting for any items? Like, Universe only has 1,500 gold, not nearly enough for another late game item. So you know, probably cloak is behind him, but he doesn't really need any more items at this point, and Fear also is pretty much capped. Like, he's got 1,200 gold. That would mean for him to get another item, he would at least need five or six minutes of farm, but that's the Aegis timer. All right, so Samael picks up his Crystalis and actually buys the Daedalus recipe here. So he, he can actually finish up the Daedalus and then he can go for the push, particularly with the Blood Rage. The opportunity to put that on Samael and have him slide a fist, get one good critical on one of the lower HP heroes, and he may actually just one-shot them. Yeah, so they probably wait for the crit on Samael then and then go for it because... Nothing else to wait for, like we said. And we go for the smoke here. He's still trying to get aggressive. RTK, he's been ruptured and is charged. He's just killing himself at that point in time, but he knows he's got to get back to CTY, but it's not going to change anything. Here comes the AKB. He is going to be tormented by CTY, but so too is CTY now going to be ripped apart by fear. Running him down and E-Home, because of that BKB, he has to be able to stop with Samael. He easily picks up another call to Fear just keeps on running through. One, two, and then third on DD. The male snaps a double kill and a triple Dyer's for fear. EG wiping E home and now going to be ready to push in the AUI universe. Are already on it in the bottom lane. They've taken out that lane of Rex. They can now join fear and some hell for what seems to be a flawless victory in game number two. E home, there goes RTK. Laguna Blade just their fantasy song. There goes GG and new pop from E home. They know this one is over. Unbelievable full performance by Eho in game number one. Wallace is how I would describe both of these games. Game one for Eho, game two for Evil Geniuses. I cannot wait for what we're going to be seeing in game three. Yeah, it just felt like EG this time around, they had a much better understanding of what they wanted to go for when it came to the picks.